Okay, welcome back friends. Today we're going to talk about direct reprogramming. We've got a couple of lectures on that topic and we're carrying on from yesterday's discussion of reprogramming in general and how we can use pluripotent stem cells to treat diseases. Today we're going to talk about direct reprogramming, which as you can imagine is the process of instead of taking a cell, remember we have kind of this differentiating landscape and you kind of fall down, right? And you have these cell types. Instead of going back up the terrain and then back down, right? We go across. We go across the terrain and we directly differentiate into our desired cell type. Now, yesterday we discussed the molecular mechanisms that keep that from happening, right? The, the molecular mechanisms that make a cell a cell, that particular cell type that it represents. So let's, um, let's have a reminder of what those are. So those are mRNA, microRNA, histone, histones and DNA methylation. <coughs> now those are all the factors that keep a particular cell as that particular cell. I'm going to bring it close up because I think you need to see a little bit more closely. Yeah, I think that's good. Right, so... The main things that keep this from happening are those molecular factors and the question is can we bypass those molecular factors, those molecular controls to get to the cell type that we want? And the answer is yes, yes we can and in many cases it's quite efficient um, but we need, to, we need to keep in mind really what's going on here, right? So remember our chromatin, our chromatin structure, right? And remember how the uh, pluripotent stem cell has a very open chromatin structure and other cells will have a very closed chromatin structure only with the cells that they want to be, only with the genes, sorry, that they want to be expressing having an open chromatin structure. And so here, we need to go from a closed chromatin structure to another closed chromatin structure as opposed to going from a closed chromatin structure to an open chromatin structure to a closed chromatin structure. And that's, that's the challenge of direct reprogramming. And indeed, there are a number of different uh, transcription factors and different pathways between cells which have varying degrees of effectiveness. Today, we're going to look at an example of a relatively effective pathway of taking fibroblasts to neurons. So, that's good. Let's look at that reprogramming. So, let's look at also reprogramming of fibroblasts to muscle cells. Now when we reprogram fibroblasts to muscle cells, we only need one transcription factor, which is myOD. And that one transcription factor is able to take these fibroblasts, which naturally express things like collagen, produce stromal structure, and turn it into muscle cells with a single transcription factor. And that single transcription factor is regulating something like 7,000 genes. And so it's quite amazing that this one factor is able to take this type of cell to that type of cell. So that's really cool. Um, and it can do that it can do that with 60 to 90% effectiveness. Right? And this was done in 1968, I think. Maybe it was 1988. 1987, I was wrong. 1987. 1987 which I don't think is particularly important, but whatever, you know. 
Now at this point we might have the very important question of why is it that we can reprogram these fibroblasts into muscle cells with 60 to 90 percent effectiveness when we can only reprogram with 5 to 10 percent effectiveness of the same fibroblasts into pluripotency, right? So let's, you know, like this is our cell, and these are two cells, and they kind of go down. So that way is 60 to 90 percent efficient. Whereas just going up like that is 5 to 10 percent efficient. Now, why is that? Why is that? That's because, that's because these cells, these cells have actually guards against pluripotency, right? So we don't want in our bodies cells spontaneously becoming pluripotent, right? So this, this is basically a cause of cancer, but it's actually in females, you'll get teratomas forming, forming in the ovaries, which is just cells becoming pluripotent and then differentiating into all kinds of cells within, and they form these kind of tumor uh, teratomas in the ovary. And so there are safeguards against cells becoming pluripotent spontaneously, which makes it more difficult for us to produce pluripotent cells. And in some cases, easier for us to directly reprogram the cells. So then, people have been looking at this, this problem for four decades, trying to find master transcription factors like myOD, except changing into other things that aren't muscle cells. Um, and the example that we're going to look at today is from fibroblasts to neurons, like I said. And so we're going to go and look at the analysis of that process. So what they did was they took their fibroblasts and they looked at transcription factors and I'm drawing this very haphazardly just so we get an idea um, transcription factors and their effectiveness that says 5F and BAM by the way and their transcription factors and the effectiveness of those transcription factors for transforming the cells and interestingly, when we use all five transcription factors that were found to be effective, you actually get diminished, diminished effectiveness. Whereas, we get high effectiveness if we just use three transcription factors. I'm going to tell you what exactly those transcription factors are in a second. Now, why is that? That's because the stoichiometry of this reaction actually needs to be spot on. I can't spell stoichiometry. And that's important because if we have overexpression or underexpression or incorrect expression or any of these genes, you're going to get the wrong outcome and you're not going to get any of the cells that you want. Which is why when we have too many transcription factors, we get a bad outcome. Whereas if we just have these three, we get a good outcome. So it's a very balanced process. Now the three transcription factors we want are A, S, C, L, A, S, C, L, 1, number 1, B, R, N, B, R, N, 2, and my, M, Y, T, 1, L. And we can come up with our armonomics for this. So this is fibroblast to neuron. So I'm going to ask, ask for some chloride in the first step. I'm going to burn two calories in the second step. I'm going to take my tank one loser in the third step. I don't know, try to memorize them. Come up with something that you can memorize so you can remember those. Whatever works for you. Okay, now. Interestingly, this experiment was performed on mice and it was still effective using much the same transcription factors as on humans. 
So we did the same experiment essentially, and we did it on humans, and we got a good result, which is interesting. We just also need to add neuro. That's an R. Neuro D1. Neuro D1. And neuro D1 is responsible for neurogenesis. So it's a functional transcription factor in the neurons, which, which is responsible for the genesis of the neurons. Um, so that, that makes sense, and it increases your efficiency quite substantially. Okay. So, in this particular experiment, we actually wanted to make a special, well, a specific kind of neurons, a specific kind of neurons called dopaminergic. And uh, this, this is just a particular kind of neuron that comes from a particular place in the, the brain, stem cell, and spinal cord area. Look it up if you want to know more about it. But dopaminergic. And in order to produce dopaminergic um, neurons, we varied the amounts of our transcription factors. Right? So... We did a screen with a wide, wide variety of transcription factors. Remember, we were able to get transcription factors that produce neurons, and now we want to produce dopaminergic neurons. And so we do a screen of a whole wide variety, and we come out with the ones that are effective, and we found that MLX1, or LMX1, I think it's MLXA1, 1A, and also FOXA2. Are the transcription factors that give us dopaminergic neurons, which is very useful, I think. And indeed, we need to verify whether these dopaminergic neurons are in fact dopaminergic neurons. And the thing we look for is TH, which is a neurotransmitter. Which is only expressed in these dopaminergic neurons. Right, so that's, that's good to know. So... We also did functional tests and we found that the dopaminergic neurons that we created responded the same way or very similar to the way that we expect from the dopaminergic neurons in general. Right, how else do we verify that the cells we've created are indeed the cells that we want? Bearing in mind, and this is the challenge with direct reprogramming, so when we have pluripotent stem cells, you can induce those pluripotent stem cells to multiply. Right? So you can get a whole heap of the same cell, which kind of drowns out any background noise in, in your culture. And indeed, if you leave it for more than four weeks in most culture, you'll only get stem cells because the predecessor cells will die. In this case, however, that's not an option because these cells don't multiply. They are, they are cell cycle arrested. They are cell cycle arrested. So how do we know that the cells that we have are behaving in exactly the way we expect. Well, we've recently developed a technique called single cell RNA analysis, or RNA sequencing. I'm going to change colour because, let's change colour, because it's fun. Right. And we perform single cell RNA sequencing on the cells at various time points through their progression. And we find the following things. So the genes that get turned down... Yeah, that's a high quality arrow, isn't it? So the genes that get turned down are the genes responsible for cell cycle, the genes responsible for main cell cycle. Right. 
And the ones that get turned up are the ones for neural projection, axons, cell projection, and apparently skeletal muscle. Right? So axon, neural projection, and cell projection. And skeletal muscle. Which I'm going to put a question mark next to because it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Right, so that's cool. We've done our single cell RNA sequencing on them and we've found that indeed the cells are behaving largely in the way that we would expect, except we've got expression of skeletal muscle genes, which is weird. Why do we have the expression of skeletal muscle genes? Well, let's do another test, and that's called TSNE, TSNE plotting. TSNE plot. And so what a TSNE plot does, TSNE plot, is it takes the entire RNA transcription, transcriptome, transcriptome, and expresses it in a two-dimensional space, shows it in a two-dimensional space that creates maximum visual differentiation between groups, right? So consider what that means. So you might have 8,000 different transcriptions, transcription factors, transcription um, RNAs being expressed, being transcribed in your, in your cell. And you need to visualise those 8,000 different parameters in a two-parameter space, right? So there's a, lot of, there's a lot of data compression going on here to show these groups in a maximally differential way and also, you know, find the correlations that actually make groups groups. And so what we find is we get our neurons down here, right? We get our myocytes. And indeed, we also have our fibroblasts over here, right? Now, why is this important? Well, we shouldn't have we shouldn't have the myocysts, myocytes. We shouldn't have the myocytes. They shouldn't exist. Why do we have myocytes? Why do we have the expression of these muscular mm, muscular cell uh, expression? Why are we getting that? And that is because of the uh, transcription factors that we've used in this process have actually caused some of the cells, or in this case, a large portion of the cells, to go down the wrong lineage. And we've actually transformed them into the wrong thing. So, there are two different cocktails of transcription factors we can be using, right? So, this is the use of D20 and D, D21 and that leads to myocytes and some neurons some neurons whereas if we used D22 I think it's D21 D21? D, no, it's D22 D22 and BAM BAM we actually get a very high population of neurons. Now, BAM is the cocktail of transcription factors that I discussed before with that histogram and the five factor, and you actually get a, uh, this one, you get a little bit, and then you have much more, so that's five, F, and that's BAM, right? And BAM is, is the combination of three transcription factors that leads to a relatively successful conversion of fibroblasts to neurons. Okay. So let's do a quick summary of what we just saw. So direct reprogramming can happen. Direct reprogramming in some cases is actually much more efficient than reprogramming into pluripotent stem cells and then back down because 
there are likely to be controls in place that keep cells from going pluripotent on accident. We don't want that to happen. It's always regulated by transcription factors. We need transcription factors in order to cause any of this. And the specific cocktail of the transcription factors is very, very important. That can lead to different kinds of neurons or getting no neurons at all, or indeed getting the specific kind of neuron that you want. And finally, as we demonstrated here, and I, I think TSNE plots are fascinating. Um, if you don't have exactly the right cocktail, instead of getting neurons, you're actually going to get myocytes. And that is directory programming. Thanks, guys.